Hello, I'm Seema from Hello Basics. I welcome you all for the next video on wave optics. In today's video, we'll discuss a refraction of light at plane boundary between two media on the basis of Huygens wave theory. In our last video, we have studied reflection of light at plane surface on the basis of Huygens principle. Today, we are going to discuss refraction of light at the plane boundary between two media again on the basis of Huygens principle. We will consider a plane refracting surface or a plane boundary xy which is separating two media with speed and refractive index v1 n1 and v2 n2 first medium will consider as a rarer medium and second medium will consider as denser medium let us consider a plane wave front a dash b dash is approaching towards surface xy this wave plane wave front a dash b dash is bounded by wave normals a dash a and b dash c and angle a dash b dash are right angles because wave normal is perpendicular to wave front we'll draw for normal m m dash and n n dash at point a and C. The angle made by the incident ray A dash A with normal is angle of incidence. We are familiar with this. So, this is angle of incidence I as well as this is also angle of incidence I. This wave front is a plane wave front. So, according to Huygens principle, at latter instant, this wave front if I want to draw, I say that that will be again plane wave front AB and that wave front will be here AB. This wave front AB is touching to the surface XY at certain time T is equal to 0. Whereas point B is still lying in air. It is not touching to the surface it will take certain time to reach to the surface xy. Suppose it will require time t to reach to the surface xy. Then this distance bc is v1t because its speed in the ray this medium is v1. So distance bc is set to be v1t. Now, when B will come to the point C, what about A? A will also travel further. Now, according to Huygens principle, each and every point on this secondary wave, uh, sorry, on this wave front AB is acting as a secondary source of light. So, A is a, a secondary source. Similarly, B is second resource and all other points lying between A and B are nothing but the secondary sources. So, from each of these secondary sources, we will get wavelets and these wavelets are in the form of hemispheres. We will consider or we draw hemisphere or semicircle. On the paper, we draw semicircle. So, in the form of semicircle, with decreasing radius as the different points from A to B are successively reaching in between A and C. First A came here, then some other point will touch the next point. In this way, at last B will touch to the surface at point C. Within time T, if B is reaching to point C, and it will travel distance V1T. A will travel distance V2T within the same time. Why I am saying V2T? Because now 
it will travel into denser medium so its speed is not same as that of the speed in the first medium and due to that it will travel distance v to t so will draw a semi circle with radius v to t in the second medium and that semi circle is a sorry this curve is a part of the hemisphere in this way in succession in between point a and c as the points on wavefront ab are touching on the surface in between a and c each and every time i'll get a such type of arc of decreasing radius and at c radius becomes zero so i'll take only two points one is this point and one another one is this point and now i'll draw a tangent to this curve which is passing through the point c that will be the new position of the wave front so here first of all i'll draw these perpendiculars to the surface and then i'll draw tangent to that surface and that tangent is cd cd is the new wave front after time t here time was zero here time is t and this cd wave front will travel further as a plane wave front and we get that as c dash d dash so in this way we can draw this diagram with the consideration of huygens principle now in this diagram also i can see i have two triangles abc and adc as this angle i told you it is i the angle between the refracted ray and the normal that is n dash c c dash is angle of refraction that is angle r this angle b and this angle d are right angle triangle because these are the angle between the wave normal and wave front as this angle is i angle bac is i how it comes that we have discussed in detail in the video of reflection if you want i'm giving here link of that uh, video you can watch it and here i tell you reason for that the xam is right angle as well as a a dash b is also right angle or i say that mac is right angle so this angle i plus this is 90 degree similarly i plus this is 90 degree and due to that we get this angle as i similarly as i told you this angle is r it's c dash c n dash and due to that we say that the angle acd is also r again same reason that this is right angle this angle c dash cd is 90 degrees the angle between the wave normal and this i is also right angle and due to that this angle becomes r very easily you can prove it and as these angles are known to us now we want to derive law of refraction of the first law of refraction which is also known as snell's law now these are the terms associated with diagram you can go through it while you are drawing diagram in exam you have to write all these things consider triangle abc and the triangle adc but in these two triangles 
angle ABC is 90 degree and angle BAC is I. So for this triangle, first of all, I'll write sine of I. As it is right angle triangle, what is sine of I? It's opposite side divided by hypotenuse. Opposite side is BC. So it is BC upon AC. And what is BC? BC is nothing but V1T. So it can be uh, written as V1T upon AC. Similarly, for second triangle, that is triangle CDA. Angle R is there. Again, I have this angle CDA is 90 degree and angle ACD is R. For this triangle, as again it is a right angle triangle, we can say that sine of R is equal to opposite side that is AD divided by hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is AC and what is AD? AD is nothing but V2T. So we can write it as V2T upon AC. Now I have two equations. One is for sine I and second is for sin r. Now I'll take ratio of these two. So sin i upon sin r is equal to v1t upon ac. Sin r it is in division with v2t upon ac when it goes in multiplication it will become ac upon v2t. ac ac will get cancelled. So TT will get cancelled and we'll get it as V1 upon V2. Now this V1 upon V2, I'll multiply and divide it by C. So I can get C upon V2 divided by C upon V1. What is C upon V2? According to definition of refractive index, which we have studied in 11th standard, we know that Refractive index is the ratio of speed of light in vacuum or air divided by speed of light in the medium. Here I am talking about absolute refractive indices. And I say that N1 and N2 are absolute refractive indices of these two medium. On that basis, we can write it as this is will be this is given as n2 upon n1 n2 is refractive index of denser medium whereas n1 is refractive index of rarer medium so this equation becomes sin i upon sin r is equal to n2 upon n1 or i can write it as n1 sin i is equal to n2 sin r and this equation is known as Snell's law or it is the law of refraction. It is said to be first law of refraction. Now as we have seen first law of refraction, we will move towards the second and third law of laws of refraction. From diagram, we say that Incident ray, refracted ray and normal are in same plane. Incident ray, refracted ray and normal are in the same plane. That is in the plane of the screen. Then what is third law? Incident ray and refracted ray are on the opposite side of the normal. Incident ray and refracted ray are on the opposite side of the normal. See? Second law and third law are same for reflection phenomena as well as for refraction phenomena. Only their first laws are different. So, in this way, on the basis of Huygens principle, refraction phenomena can be explained. As we have sin i upon sin r is equal to v1 upon v2 is equal to n2 upon n1, this I am giving because it is used 
in numericals you will require it for numericals so write down it and on the basis of this few things we have to discuss that if v1 is greater than v2 if v1 is greater than v2 means what the first medium is rarer and second medium is denser in that case what will happen n1 is less than n2 means i is greater than r how i am getting this because i know that refractive index of rarer medium is greater than that of the denser medium i am considering that v1 is greater than v2 from this diagram if this ratio is greater than 1 n2 upon n1 is greater than 1 means n1 is smaller than n2 right and refractive index of rarer medium is less than that of the refractive index of denser medium here i is greater than r so for oblique incidence refracted ray bend towards the normal when light is traveling from denser to rarer medium it bends away from the normal this i have given for which medium v1 is greater than v2 means from rarer to denser right and for denser to rarer now here i can see that this is bending towards the normal now from rarer to denser v1 is greater than v2 so n1 is smaller than n2 it is bending towards the normal whereas if it is moving from denser to rarer what will happen instead of moving towards it it will bend away from this and in that case i will be smaller than r what will happen i will be smaller than r now one more thing here you can observe that the image is not inverted as we have seen in reflection because a is coming as a d and b is coming as a c so there is no inversion as it is observed in case of reflection lateral inversion was observed here there is no inversion image is not inverted and what about size of the image the image size and the object size they are not same they are different in reflection they were same because the two triangles were congruent there but here these two triangles are not congruent ad is not same as bc so i can't say that ab is equal to cd these sizes of the images uh, object and image are different and these sizes will be same for normal incidence for oblique incidence these sizes are different it may be greater than object or less than object depending on whether traveling from rarer medium to denser medium or denser medium to rarer medium here is a list of questions asked on today's topic and all these questions which are given is the same question only language is different this sort of question is asked for either three marks or for four marks or only diagram might be asked for two marks if only diagram is asked generally marks are distributed as one mark is given for diagram and one mark is for labeling but while you are drawing diagram for this always keep in mind don't forget to show arrows for the rays which will indicate light is coming from which side if you miss on that you may lose your marks 
so be careful while drawing diagram show arrows for the rays thank you for watching see you soon in next video